Hello fellow YouTubers, this is Jaybo with another video, which is a request video of sorts. And what was requested? Well, I have this uh, Uberti 1873 Colt clone, which is a Cattleman 2. Uh, the one people complain about because it has the transfer safety in the hammer. So it only fires with your finger on the trigger. And uh, the other concern people have with this is it doesn't have the regular four click. It's got a three click. I don't really care about that. I care about shooting the gun. So <laughs> it shoots wonderfully. As you will see with the video, I stick on the end of this. So anyway, what was the request? Well, the request was, how do you change the handspring, which I'm going to make sure this is unloaded. Uh, the handspring that is inside here that rotates the cylinder like that. Uh, typically, what you get is a version like this which has a spring attached to the hand. That's what this is called. It pushes up and rotates your barrel. So what happens is uh, this spring will typically break very easily. It's kind of a rolled end and you tap it in here when you replace with a new one or you can buy the complete assembly. And the problem people have is uh, the reliability of these, these don't last very long, especially like in black powder guns, especially because of the corrosive nature of black powder. So Uberti went and designed theirs differently. <clears throat> so consequently, it changes differently. And somebody online had asked me um, how to change that because they couldn't find a video on YouTube. So I went and searched YouTube high and low. I found disassembly videos for Cattleman, the Cattleman 1873 revolvers and a Cattleman 2. And lo and behold, they would disassemble the whole thing, but they would never take the handspring out. So I'm going to show you how to do that. That's the sole and purpose of this video. And um, pretty much most of these are the same, same kind of uh, set up. Uh, this hammer here is actually from a black powder revolver, the 1851 Colt. I shoot black powder. We put your percussion caps on there. But the principle is the same. And I have an 1872 open top as well. Uh, this was the production model. This is not a conversion model. It's the only year that uh, Colt did that in 1872, pretty much using old parts they had laying around. And then they came out with this beauty. But what they did was they retained all the same parts. And we have the cylinder stop is the same. And it's also in the same in the Cattleman too. And also the hammer spring, basically the same which uh, goes in here. And we also have the trigger, which is basically the same, except in here, the trigger is different, which I will show you. So with that, uh, also the Heritage Rough Riders 22 pistols are made the same way, with the same kind of handspring and all that business. So let's just uh, get this stuff out of the way and uh, we will disassemble the 1873 Colt Clone Cattleman 2 by Uberti, which is a fantastic pistol. I love shooting this. This is a 357. So what we're going to do is you put this on your half cock or quarter cock, whatever you want to call it. It's not a quarter cock because there's no four clicks. I'm going to take out the pin base pin, open the side gate, roll out the cylinder, which on these, uh, you can see I need to clean it. So that's one of the reasons why I'm 
picking this apart for this video is I do need to clean it. So I was like, well, let's just do that at the same time. So this is a little bit different uh, with this in here. I lubed this up very well. And uh, so basically that's the part right here that the hand rotates the cylinder with. I'll put that aside. And uh, so usually, typically what I do is the first thing I do is I loosen this screw down here. You'll see that gap opening. I don't take it all the way out, just enough to relieve tension on that. And then we remove the screws. Uh, it doesn't really matter what sequence. I'm sure there's going to be some schmuck online that's going to argue that. And uh, while I disassemble this, I will make brief comment about schmucks. Um, a lot of people get on my case on my videos, basically criticizing me because I don't use all the technical jargon all the time. I will say thingamawatsit, gizmo, thingy, you know, like I'm taking out this screw from the trigger thingy. You know, that seems to bother some people. I don't know why. That's just the way I talk. So, I'm not a professional gunsmith. I don't claim to be one. And I also don't claim to be a gun expert, a firearm expert. I can only talk about what I've done from experience. And no, there's many people online much more knowledgeable than me. And I am not a BSer. So, um, if I rub you the wrong way by how I talk, um, you can watch videos someplace else, I guess. So, once we have this apart, um, uh, I want to make mention that I bought this gunsmithing bit from Brunnels or Brunel's, depending on what part of the country you come from, which is another thing I got criticized for quote-unquote mispronouncing. And I'm Franco-American, and you can tell when I speak that I say dat and I make a left, and that's just a French-Canadian accent. And, uh, you know, so there's no apologies. But anyway, this was about 14 or $16, and what's good about it is it is squared. So it goes into these screws without stripping the screws. And uh, it's also very, very magnetized. So I'm going to take out this sear spring. Because like I said, i got to clean the whole thing anyway. So, And uh, this is the traditional spring, which it uses. Uh, these are the same ones, that metal fatigue right here. And you can actually see a little bow right here. So this probably has a couple hundred rounds left in it. And it's going to break on me. But that's what these do. So buy extra parts. That's what I do. I have an envelope with about three or four of those. I can use the same ones in the 1851 Colt. Uh, with a little bit of modification on the corners with a file. So I'm going to take this screw out. For the uh, trigger. And you can see that the trigger is different. Than your regular trigger that I was talking about. From the traditional design. So Uberti added this little piece here and that's because of the transfer, transfer bar safety. So you can see it's the same part except for this part welded on or machined on or molded on or whatever they do to make those cast iron. Um, so, so there's subtle differences. I figured I would show that. So if you break your trigger, you wear out your trigger in here, and it's no longer um, doing what it's supposed to do, um, you'll probably have to order this part from your birdie. So I figured I'd show you that while I take it apart. So, you know, this video is not boring. It's kind of interesting. I got interesting stuff in it. So now we are going to take the cylinder bolt stop part thingy. Watch a mahoozy, think about what's it, and whatever else annoys people. And uh, poke this out. Uh, this looks the same uh, as the traditionally uh, they do.
and you'll notice that one side is much thinner and one side is thicker. Uh, that's because uh, the thinner side is the side that slides over this part right here. So when this part wears or this part wears, you start having problems where you go to pull the hammer back. Uh, typically, if it's worn incorrectly or it's a new part that doesn't fit correctly, you'll lower the hammer on a cylinder round, especially on black powder, you'll notice it, and then it'll lock. You can't pull it because this didn't snap over the end of that. You see how that fits? If it doesn't snap over and it stays right here because it isn't filed properly. So a lot of times aftermarket parts, you'll have to fine tune these parts. And that's to be expected because um, I've had really good luck with Wolf Springs. So I would highly recommend them. That's what I put in here. And I have a one and a half pound trigger pull in this pistol. So it is a hair trigger, okay? But that's what I want. It's single action. It's nice and smooth, quick, snappy. And uh, so now I am going to back out the hand piece. Now the thing with that is, is you have to be careful not to lose your pieces. And I'll show you why in a minute. There's a spring in there with a short little metal post that puts pressure on the back of this hand. So I'm going to put this down carefully so I don't lose it. Oh, see, I just said that and it sounded like that piece fell out. So I'll probably, yep, it did. So, see how easy that is? I was being careful and I still almost lost that piece. If you lose that little piece right there, you're not going to be able to rotate your cylinder when you put this back together. So do not lose that little piece. It is imperative. It's just a little thing. But that is what replaces this style. And uh, there is a little spring in there, which I'm going to take out in a minute. Hopefully that didn't fall out, because then I'll be very disappointed. <laughs> but this is the hammer, and this is the hand, which goes in that hole right there. And... Um, this has the transfer bar assembly in it and you will see that there's a pin here a pin here and i'm not sure if you can knock these pins out to replace the transfer bar safety but that is so there is no pressure on this pin unless you're pulling the trigger and you get this spring loaded Thing right here it goes up in here with that piece it's all in tandem drilled through the hammer and that's the assembly so that is very much different from the traditional style so with that being said now I'm going to show you the difficult part which is now I need my smaller screwdriver out of here. I think this will do it. Now in here, you see there's a little flathead screw. You see that? That is your handspring screw, retention screw. So you want to put a precision screwdriver in there. It's a very small screw. And again, this is stuff that is easy to lose and you need to be very careful and pay attention to what you're doing. See, that's it. That's just a little, a little tiny screw, okay? I'm gonna put that down there with that pin. And... I don't know if I can get that. No, it doesn't want to cooperate. So I gotta get a smaller screwdriver. Boy, let me tell you, this stuff can be very irritating.
There we go. Here is your handspring assembly, okay? That is your entire handspring assembly right here. This little piece goes inside the spring, which goes inside that tiny hole, and it puts pressure on the back side of this. As you can see, the wear marks, witness marks on here. That's where that spring applies pressure on the hand when you rotate the cylinder. So you need all four of these pieces in tandem. You lose one of these little pieces, you're screwed either way. So that's basically how that comes apart. And this is the reverse. Putting it back together is the reverse of what I just did. And um, I would recommend you put the hand in here first, then that spring, then that pin, then the end screw into that little hole and tighten your end screw and it will put pressure against the hand. Now as you saw, when I took this hand out, that pin that was in here fell out through here. So that's why you have to be very careful when you disassemble this, that you do not lose those parts because you will be screwed. You'll have to get another part. And as somebody I know used to say frequently, you cannot unscrew what's been screwed. <laughs> so once you lose that part, it's gone. You'll have to get another one. I don't know where you would begin. I think your birdie would probably send one if you contacted them or sell you one or if it was still under warranty, they probably wouldn't cover it because you disassembled the gun and you lost it. So it's not a failure of the part. So I hope this helps out somebody who is trying to figure out um, how to get that out. That's it right there. So, um, Good luck finding parts if you need them. Uh, I think that hand and that spring will probably last close to the lifetime of the firearm. Um, I'm pretty sure of that, which is why you birdie did that. So while you have smaller parts and they're easier to lose, um, it's a better design. It'll last because if you own any kind of firearm like this that uses this old fashioned type hand spring, you have already had to replace it two, three, four, maybe five times in five or six years if you shoot it often. And it's just one of those parts that always flexes and flexes and flexes. And then metal fatigue, like when you take a teaspoon and you bend it, bend it, bend it, and then it breaks. It's the same thing. The metal fatigue, it just breaks. So they still haven't solved the problem of this breaking, though. Uh, you always get one that breaks or the other. And uh, it's just one of those things. Buy extra springs. And they're only about usually three, maybe four dollars each. And get them from Wolf Springs and other companies as well. So that's that. Uh, this should cover the YouTube censorship stuff also because I'm not customizing anything. I just disassembled a firearm. And uh, so basically, you'll need a small screwdriver, preferably smaller the better, precision. Uh, for working on eyeglasses, maybe, uh, because you need to get into that tiny little, that tiny little hole. So you have to get in there to get that spring, unless you have to bang the crap out of it like I did to get it out, and you take a chance of losing things. So, with that being said, I hope this helps somebody out, and if you have any questions, leave a question. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to. I'm not monetized, so I don't make a penny from it. And uh, there's no advertising. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you like it, subscribe, tell people about it, and uh, come back again sometime soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. So we'll try it this way. Yeah, those are pretty hot. Which is... Uh, Okay, because these are, this is a 357 Magnum.
so it can handle the extra pressure, but these are more like 38 plus P's.